personal personal development personal development um, unplugged 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 Hey, welcome to Personal Development Unplugged. And if it's your first time, here's by way of a quick explanation about where you are and what you're going to find. And if you're not new to the PDU and you're returning, just fast forward, say about a minute, and we'll be straight on with the show. My name's Paul, Paul Clough. I'm a hypnotherapist, but I'm also a master hypnotist, an NLP trainer, and I just like helping people work with their minds to make dramatic, wonderful changes in their lives to feel good. And that's it really, feel good. So the whole point of this is the genre of personal development has become so blooming complicated, been made complicated by people who want to make it complicated. And it's my aim to break down that complication, make things simple. Einstein said, in simplicity, there's genius. And we're going to go for that genius. So create processes break them down give you you things you can use that really will change your life there you go that's it hey and here's your quick heads up for this particular episode here he goes into how we can use hope and how hope is not false hope but allows you to find out what's missing and then create your certainty which helps create beliefs which helps create um, that feeling of just confidence self-esteem and allows you to get the goals you want it's really interesting i think you'll learn an awful lot hi welcome to i think will be a meandering because i'm not quite sure where this is going to go but i know that i think it's quite important well it's important to me because it made me think overnight I was actually awake at night thinking about this. Um, you see, is there any such thing as false hope? See, I was always th taught or I learned that there's no such thing as false hope because hope is hope, isn't it? It's just hope. And hope's got to be good because hope has got to be better than no hope, isn't it? Well, that's what feels good for me. With the exception, of course, of people who, the horrible people in this world, who behave in, or people who behave in a horrible way, such as the scammers, and try to give hope to people. But then there's opposites about this hope thing, you, th you see. You see, you can hope for the best, but you can also hope that something doesn't come true. You know, maybe on the negative side, hope that you don't get found out. That's hope as well, isn't it? But it's like on a negative, but hope for the best is hope for a good outcome, isn't it? Now you see, you, why why is this in my mind? Why is it in my mind? You see, thinking about this, this thing called hope, what is it? I don't know. But I believe it gives you something to build upon. You see, in the beginning, when I was work, just about to work with people, I hoped, and I had this massive hope in my in me, that my belief in what I'd learned in trying to help people with hypnosis and NLP, could and would help people. I couldn't be sure, could I? Because I hadn't worked with anybody. I'd work with people in a training environment, but that's where we're all supporting each other and you're never 100% certain that that's it. It's only when you get into the real world and you get one-to-one, -one, there's no one there with you and it's someone who needs help. And I really hoped my belief in what I'd learned could help people. That was a real big hope. And that was good, wasn't it, to have that type of hope? But there's also fear in that type of hope. You know, what would happen if it didn't? Mm -hmm. You know, without that, you see, without that hope, though, that's the thing, without that hope, I don't think I'd have been able to do what I did. And then I now really believe I can help people. I can help people directly and indirectly. You see, I have that belief in, in the abilities that I have and the abilities in other people because I've seen it now. I've seen other people change, do massive emotional changes in their life. And therefore, I now have this belief inside me. So the hope was a great foundation to give me something to work on until I got that belief, my own inner knowing. So 
What the hell's this got to do with anything, Paul? Well, I'll tell you, because it's a bit of a musing of mine now. You see, I was going a bit deeper in, in some reading. I, 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 there's a guy called Seneca, a Stoic philosopher, and he wrote letters. And you see, this is what got me thinking. I was reading, I think it was either the second or third letter, just in the beginning of a book. And it was, again, as usual, one little line. One little line that hit me out of everything. And it was, fear follows hope. Oh, what? Fear follows hope? Because I always think of hope being positive and fear as being negative. You know, it's a negative emotion as far as I'm concerned, fear. And hope is, gives me that foundation for belief, therefore it must be positive. So, here's the thing, made me think. And maybe you'll take some time to think with me. You see, when you do think about that hope, there is some fear there, isn't there? There's the fear that maybe is not going to work because that's why I'm hoping because if I knew I wouldn't have that fear I really hope something happens or I really hope something doesn't happen and in in there there is an element of fear and when I talked about that in one of the other podcasts um, fear is in the what's missing what's missing is where the fear comes from and you see a human being, and you're human, I'm human, aren't we? We are. We are. Surely we are. You know, we all, all as a personal need, require certainty. One of our basic needs, we need certainty. Okay, yes, we need a house over our head. We need food. We need to do all the things that male and females do, you know, to, to keep the world going with, with little ones. But we also need certainty. And it's that uncertainty is now creating the hope and that uncertainty is anxiety can create anxiety and fear you know and i so I, I talked about this in um in the pdu and it's called a fearful story so if you want to go back that was only i think the last two episodes ago so what can we do what could we do to really work on hope and let go of any fear because I, I, you know, from my experience, I know if I've got hope, I'm, in my mind, I'm looking in the right direction. I'm looking for a good result. I'm looking for something to happen to allow me to move on. And when it creates that foundation for me to get the beliefs, uh, then, then I can pick up the skills because these are personal beliefs. These are identity beliefs. I can. I'm going to. It's okay. I'm okay. All those identity, identity beliefs allow me to, Either use the skills I have and actually do them, you know, behave in a way that accesses all those skills, accesses all the emotions, or gives the belief that I will find it. You know, this too will pass and I will find a way. Because once I've got those beliefs, that hope is like intrinsically locked in, linked in. And then I'm going to get what I, I just know I'm going to get something positive out of this. So, what can we do about it? Well, I'm going to tell you just after this little note from our sponsor. And now, a word from our sponsor. Over to you, Mumsy. Hello, my darlings. And yes, I'm I'm sponsorising again. I think I guess for this potty thing. Um, really, we don't have spot. We don't have spotties. We don't have sponsors. You know, it is Paul making me feel really, really nice. But what I'd love is if you'd like, if you have lots and lots and lots of little friends that would like to come and sit, you know, on the mat as I said before, with with Monty and I, you know, with a glass of milk, we can have some real fun listening to to all this stoicity fied philosophizing thing what he's talking about it's it, it's confusing to me but i'm sure you know but anyway if you'd love he'd love you to share this with other people to get them on to come onto the mat with you and me and we're gonna have a jolly jolly good time you know <laughs> thank you mumsy could i have a glass of milk later Thank you. 
there you go. Word from our sponsor. You know, you just have to love that lady. Anyway, we were talking about what's missing so we can really uh, change hope into into something that gives us a real foundation of moving forward. So in my mind is we need to find out what's missing. So what is missing? And, and sometimes what's missing is just an example that either there there's something that is going to happen, something works, or a counterexample of the things that we're fearful of that means it's going to disappear. So you can get Jenny Journal out. If you've got this this hope, but you want to look at the... the, We need to examine the fear behind it because if that fear grows, the hope's going to dwindle, isn't it? So let's look in our Jenny Journal of what examples in your life have you got that will support you achieving what you want? Or, if you're not quite sure about achieving what you want, but certainly where you've achieved your goal, you've found um, the skills, the resources, or you've created that serendipity because you've put your attention, your focus on the goal in hand, and things just come your way. Where in your life have you had that happen? And make a note of it. And when you make a note of it, you will remember them. And take time in your mind to go back over that memory. And as you go back through that memory, you're telling your unconscious mind, this is what we did. Let's go find more. Maybe you need to find examples of other people achieving this. You know, other people achieving similar goals with the similar hope. Because if somebody else can do it, damn right, you can do it. You can find a way. So let's really look into finding examples and counterexamples in your life of people either achieving what you what you are hoping to achieve or dispelling the fear that you're fearful of not achieving. And you see, that's when we create or allow this identity level belief, I can, I am. And that makes this a foundation of moving forward because it allows you to move forward with more certainty. And that certainty will give you self-esteem. That certainty will give you confidence and competence. That certainty will give you motivation. It'll give you and, and get you to know how important this is. It's your value. And it becomes a real foundation. A real foundation to move forward. You see, when you think about, when you have this hope and belief, What has happened in the real world? You know, could it cure diseases? Well, you can't say yes or no, because no one, no one, maybe doctors can, but they have trouble sometimes, uh, can say they cure. But people can cure themselves. That's what I believe. It's just a belief. Without that hope and belief, can they cure themselves? You know, if they don't believe, what's going to happen? If they don't believe they can get better, well, my bet is, Well, they don't. But I know of so many people, or I've read about so many people, who have believed. You know, even taking the simple thing of a placebo. People believe they're taking something that's going to help cure them. There's nothing in it, not physically anyway, other than the belief that it gives them. And we can all Google, you know, these miraculous or instant remissions. Let's call them, they are miracles, they are miracles. Because every miracle is a wonderful thing. But uh, there is this remission. you know. But we can also have the belief in, if it's on health, in the doctors, the surgeons, the people looking after us. Because when we have belief in them, it creates that inner, inner resources to take on what they're doing and help what they're doing to us. I mean, you think about it. If you have a goal, and this is away from health now, but you just have a normal goal, a goal that you're looking to achieve, yet you have, you know, you don't really believe that you can do it. You don't really believe that you're worthy of it, that you're entitled to it. What's going to happen? Well, it's just not going to happen, is it? And that's what I see when I work with people. It's that negative belief for a wonderful intention, you know, because that intention 
you know, people say, well, how can you have a positive intention around that negative belief that I'm not worthy or I'm not going to get it or, you know, I don't deserve it? Well, if you think about it, that negative belief stops you sometimes doing things that if you didn't get it, you'd be so disappointed. It would be like another disappointment upon another disappointment. So that belief is there to say, well, don't do it because then you won't be disappointed. But I also know the conflict in there is when you really want to do something and that belief is stopping you, but you're going to try it, the feelings are really, well, they're just so, so in conflict with each other. What your unconscious mind is trying to do for you is actually not, is causing you the complete opposite. Therefore, when you change that belief, you change that hope into belief and have that firm foundation. It means you can have your unconscious mind working for you, still to protect you, but in a way that's using all the skills and resources that you have now, or you can achieve or, or get, or you know, and in that way, you won't be disappointed because you'll have that self-esteem of doing your best, whether you achieve it or not, is, is is irrelevant to some extent because you'll know that you've done your best, and when you've done your best, man, you can build upon that because you can look at things with an open heart, with an open eyes, with full awareness, and learn from it. Because when you learn from it, the next time you go for it, you just know you're going to achieve, because now you believe that you have found what you need. But more times than enough, when you change that belief and have that intention, you're going to get what you want. So that is, well, very deep, Paul, isn't it? All from that one little sentence, fear follows hope. So, what can we do? What else can we do? You see, I see, and I initially put this as a, like a little re, a little reframe around hope, and the small changes you make can make massive changes in your life. But it's not just a reframe, is it? It's an understanding of what we do, but how we can use hope. Because once we have that hope, we know we can use it to move on to that belief. So. Let's have a think. What do you hope for for yourself? You know, let's really go down it. Because if you hope for it, it's the start of the direction of your goal. Something you believe that you feel will be good for you. So before you really get into those counterexamples, let's think. What would happen if we imagined this hope had created the belief, the foundation to move on, and you found all the resources you needed to achieve whatever you you desired. If you went to that place in time, having already achieved it, what would it feel like? So if you were to imagine now, being, being that thing, that, that event, that success, that goal. If you're in that goal now, the success of that goal, knowing that you've got it, how would it feel? And to do that, just go there now in your mind. Imagine having got it already. See what you'll see. Hear what you'll hear. And feel that feeling. And when you feel that feeling, notice, is it something exactly the way you want it? Because if it isn't, then you know what's missing. And you're going to add it back. But if it is the way you like it, if it is the way you want it, just realize if you make what you're seeing slightly maybe brighter, bigger, closer, hearing things in wonderful stereo. Just notice how that feeling increases, because you can increase that feeling. And as you increase that feeling, guess what? You're telling your unconscious mind, this is where we, we, we're going. This is a wonderful result. And see, when you do that, when you go back to your Jenny Journal, it gives you that motivation, gives you a purpose, a reason why you want it, which then allows you to home in, as we said before, focus on what's missing because that's what fear is remember fear is in the what's missing and as you find it you can then find ways to add it back into your life it's really quite simple really isn't it because we said before in simplicity there is genius so there you go not the longest podcast in the world but i think it's given it's, there is still things in my mind going on and I think there's more to discuss and more to think deeply about. Dive in even more. I'd love your thoughts. I'd love your thoughts on this um, because it, 
it's like that generative learning I talk about. Here's my bit into the generative field. And if it gets you to think, and if it gets you to learn something, share it back with me, please, because I've still got it. You'll still keep it. But between us, we'll expand it even more. And that's magic. And it's magical. So I really hope you do that, because I believe you will. And yeah, come back to me. Um, You can email me at paul at paulclough.co.uk. And you can go to my website. There's a little contact form there, so it makes it even easier. So that's just paulclough.co.uk. And yeah, please do that, because I'd love to hear from you. Um, There's some easy ways to subscribe. Uh, And if you just go to paulclough.co.uk forward slash subscribe, that'll take you onto um, a nice uh, one page telling you how to subscribe. And you can have all these episodes and back issues, you know, things like that. So that'd be really good. But I really want you to um, get the most out of this. So help me to help you to help me. Something like that anyway. So with that, have more fun than you can stand and enjoy every heartbeat. And if you really want to uh, have a look at some other things, I do have a new website. It's called paulcloughonline.com. There's uh, a couple of um, hypnosis tracks on there. These are these for purchase. They're not available elsewhere. And also a anxiety um, project of mine. So it's a, it's a whole let's get rid of anxiety together um, program. Have a look at that if you like. There's, there'll be other things around as well in the near future. But if that interests you, you know, it's free to start. So just enjoy. Please click on, on that and have a, have a, just have a good look around. Okay. Let me know what you think. I really do value your feedback. So speak soon. Love to hear from you. As I said before, have more fun than you can stand. Bye bye now. And just a quick word before you go. I know I always ask you to share with your friends, and I really do hope you do. And if you want to subscribe, go to paulclough.co.uk forward slash subscribe. And there's lots of different ways there, instructions how to subscribe to this podcast. And also have a look at the back issues. There's lots of stuff here. I just hope you really enjoy and look forward to speaking to you real soon. Give me your feedback. I'd love to hear it.